Okay, Libri NMS applications. Now, when we think about a network management system, we think about monitoring the network. Now, uh, this is all well and good with Libri NMS. We can monitor switches, routers, and firewalls, but servers are increasingly playing an important role on the network. And uh, we need to figure out a way to monitor this a little bit better. We can add servers into Libri NMS, no problem. As you can see here, I have the local host, but this is not really telling us the whole story. We're not really monitoring the applications running on this server. And that's exactly what Libri NMS applications is trying to solve, is get stats from these applications, get them back into Libri NMS, uh, add them to the database, alert on them, build graphs. Uh, so that's exactly what we're going to try and do here, is uh, try to add some applications to our local host here. So there is literally thousands of applications that you could run on a server, but in order to see the ones that are supported by Libri and MS, we can go over here to the Libri and MS Docs website, uh, Applications. Uh, if you scroll down here, you'll see a list of uh, applications here that we can actually start to monitor on the server, and most of the major ones are in here, so uh, you'll probably find a bunch that you're using and you want to alert on and uh, start monitoring. Uh, so uh, you can just scroll through this list uh, and, and figure out the ones that you want to monitor and uh, figure out how to do that. Now, when I was going through this list earlier, I saw an application on here that I'm monitoring, but that wasn't on the list, and uh, I figured that they might have removed support for it, but they actually didn't. Uh, it just was never in the docs. Uh, so if you really want to see uh, what applications are supported, you can just go to the GitHub uh, Librian MS repository. Uh, Librian MS includes polling applications. And just scroll through this list here and you'll see all the applications that are really, really supported. Now, how you get some of these working, if they're not on this list, that might be a different story. But uh, RD Cache D was the one I didn't see on the list there. And I know I'm monitoring the server with that. So, uh, yeah, they, just go through this list and you can figure out which ones uh, you want to monitor. Okay, so we have a couple different ways of actually getting the stats from the applications off of the server into Libri NMS, and uh, they're all listed here at the beginning uh, by directly connecting to the application, this SNMPD extend, or an agent that Libri NMS wrote. But if you go through the uh, applications here, you can see almost like 90% of them support SNMP extend, so that's actually the only one I've really used. Uh, I, I, you know, it works fine, so I had no reason to change it. Now, you might want to run the agent for some whatever reason, so... You could do that too, but uh, for, for my demo purposes, what we're going to do here, we're just going to be using SNMP Extend. Okay, so in order to start here, we need to figure out what applications we're going to be monitoring. Um, I'm going to be monitoring applications on my local host, which is my Libri NMS server. And I know when I installed Libri NMS, we installed an Nginx web server, a MySQL, MariaDB server, and also RRD cache. So luckily, we can monitor all those things uh, with Libri NMS applications. So we'll get started here with uh, Nginx first right here and when you click on that it basically just gives you the instructions on how to enable this and you're really going to be doing this all on the server where nginx is running uh, so what we need to do first is just enable a little status page here it's just a little web page on your website that gives you stats on how this thing uh, is performing so we can just go in here and edit the libritms.conf file. This was the initial file we created when we installed libritms uh, and made the web server actually serve up libritms content. So uh, we just need to go down here. Uh, it doesn't really matter where. Uh, all right, here should be fine. And I'm also going to allow my... Uh, I don't really have to do this, but I'm just going to allow my uh, local network here just so we can... Uh, look at this web page for us because if we don't put this in here then only the loopback address is allowed to access this website and that would only be the engine uh, the uh, Libri NMS server so I want to view it from my web browser on my PC here so I just want to allow that too so we'll just restart this restart nginx it looks like it started fine I usually always do a status after I restart something just to see if it's working if it threw any errors or anything so we should be able to go to this website now 192.168.1.35. I hope I didn't have another forward slash. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can see here that it responded back with a couple things. Active connections one, server or server accepts handled requests. Reading zero, writing one. You know, I, I'm <laughs> this is a demo box, so you know these numbers are not going to be really that impressive. But uh, you get the point here. Uh, this is basically just serving up a little content for us. So the next step is we got to put a little script on our server. So here, maybe there we go. 
Okay, this is just putting a little script right here, this nginx script. Uh, then we need to allow execute permissions on that script. There we go. And now we need to add this. This is really the key part here because all of this stuff here uh, really didn't help Libri and MS at all. I mean, it, it needs to get to the end goal, but uh, this is really where um, when Libri and MS pulls this device, when it pulls the local host, it's going to ask SNMP uh, to give me some information uh, here. And it, really when I pull that, it runs the script on the server, and the script basically looks at this website, uh, gets all this information, and then the script hands it back to SNMP and SNMP finally ships it off back to the server, uh, to Libri and MS server, so we can uh, view it all in here, all the stats. So let's put that part in the config here. So we need to go etc SNMP, nano SNMP D, and we need to extend. We actually already did this kind of once with, uh, when you actually enable SNMP on the server itself. You actually put this little distro in here, and all this is really doing, this is a little script that basically just goes and tries to figure out what distribution of Linux you're running. So this is going to be Nginx, uh, let's see, uh, stats, I don't know, we can just put whatever, these are just comments. Okay, that restarted. So now that should have been all we had to do here. So we just restarted SNMP on our host. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go and try to discover this. You know, when we get an application discovered and it's working, you'll see a little apps tab in here. You'll also see a new app uh, a tab up here at the top called apps. So when we run this discover, I'm, I'm pretty sure that app tab is going to pop up here. Okay. Well, it popped up here. It hasn't popped up here yet. We might have to run the polar first before it hops in, but let's try... Uh, so yeah, it hasn't gotten all the stat yet. So it just discovered that uh, Nginx is there, that it can actually ask for it and get information from it, but the polar script hasn't run yet, so it hasn't really grabbed any stats, you know? That's kind of a good de uh, delineation between the discovery script and the polar script. This found that there was an Nginx application, and this is actually going to pull it and get the stats out of it. So let's just run this. Okay, now you can see that it actually started uh, filling out the graph a little bit, but we have to get uh, a couple polls in before this will actually start writing graphs. So we'll actually come back to this and look at it in a little bit here. Let's go ahead and enable another application that we have running on our server. Let's see, we wanted to do uh, MariaDB, right? Maria. Uh, actually, I think it's called MySQL in here, same thing. All right, they want me to create a cache directory for the SNMP... Daemon. Uh, okay. Sure. Uh, we're not using that. We're going to install these packages. These are just probably same uh, dependencies that when this script runs on here. Uh, we go apt get installed. And I, I think I ran through this once before, so it might uh, say I've already installed everything. So if yours might not, so don't worry if that happens. Uh, they want us to throw this file into the SNMP directory. So let's just come back to that. We're going to put this script in here first. You know, this is the same kind of script that the Nginx server is running. It's just going to run this script when uh, it pulls the host. And uh, we need to do execute permissions on the script. And we need to add this line. Uh, before we do, let's just, let's just create this thing first. They want us to put the uh, username, password, local host of the database server and a mysql.cnf file inside uh, the SNMP directory where this, well, we're really where the script lives and that's in here. So nano, what was it? mysql.cnf. Okay, and we'll just copy and paste this in here. And these values are when you set up uh, Librium MS the first time. Uh, we had to set the MySQL user password and other things, but this was actually MySQL is going to be Librium MS. And this is going to be password because we didn't, we just left it at the default, which is password, which you should definitely not do. Okay, so we did that. We need to add this extend into our SNMP config. Okay, 
Let's see here. That's probably not how you write it, but whatever. Okay, save. We need to restart. Okay. So now, you know, we have this we have this app on here. Is this gonna work? So now we need to discover the next app. Let's run discovery here. Okay. Oh, we got another one. Cool. We're on the polar script. Okay, so this should start filling out, and you can see the MySQL one actually gives you a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so you have all sorts of stuff to look at. Uh, we want to do RRD cache D2, and now this one is a little different because we're not actually going to be using SNMP D extend uh, here. This one's actually going to talk to the application directly. So what we actually need to do is set this uh, RRD socket. Yes, RRD cache D socket. Right now it's just running on a socket on the local machine, so really nothing over the network can talk to it. Uh, so we really need to put a IP address in here, and that would be... And you're going to need to do this for distributed polling anyway. So you could just do... Well, this would just bind it to the local host. I guess you could maybe just put the one the local loopback address in here, 127.0.0.1. Uh, I might make it a little bit more secure, but I'm just going to leave it that like this for now. Um, and that should be fine. We also have to edit one more thing in the RRD file, which is in default. This is nano RRD. There we go. Uh, these are all the settings. So when RRD cache D surfaces start on Ubuntu, these are all the settings it reads. But we need to have one here that actually binds it to uh, pretty much any interface on a certain port. Um, right now it's not bound to like any network interfaces. It's just bound to the socket. So now this should bound to all the network interfaces. So RRD cache D. Okay, that's there. So now let's just see if this worked. Uh, we'll just go here and try to discover this one now. Discovery. Apps. Okay, I think I know why, because I think... Let me turn this on. So, if you go to settings and application, you can turn these off and on, but... I've never really had to do this. Uh, usually, they're all off by default, and when the discovery script runs, they turn them on, so... I don't know why you need to do that, but let's try to turn this on real quick, because this is not really trying to discover anything over SNMP, so maybe it needs to be on in order for it to discover it or pull it in. Actually, you know what? You know what? I just think I know what it was. It's not even a discovery. It needs to be pulled, but I think the Polar script ran and it ran, but this should clear up here after a little bit. Let me run Polar again and see if it gets it any better. Yeah, there we go. So that little question mark you saw there, that's not good when you have an application. That usually means something's broken with it. It can't get stats off of it. But these should actually uh, start filling out here in a second. So I'm going to pause the video real quick, and we'll just wait a couple minutes here until uh, this uh, starts filling out. So another thing while we're waiting here, you could just run this Polar script. And you remember I've always been saying this Polar script grabs all the stats of all devices. So we could just run that Polar script and maybe search for RRD cache D. And uh, you see, this was first trying to connect to that agent program I was talking about, that agent uh, application that Librium MS wrote, but it, it didn't, it wasn't able to connect to that. So it just was trying to connect to the localhost uh, 442217, and that's what uh, we did. And you can see it actually got some values here. Now, this is not written out as nice as some of the other ones, but you can see here that it says update received, and there's some values in here, tree node numbers and some values and journal bytes and some values. So we, we're not we're not making up these numbers out of thin air. So these are these are definitely getting uh, stats from RRD cache D. And this is all the MySQL stuff here. You just have to, I mean, you probably just search for, seek, uh, well, that might pull up a lot, but yeah, see, MySQL is, the, it's the database, so there's a lot of MySQL uh, comments in here, so, yeah, you can just go through here, but I know these are, um, these are a MySQL status, I, I guess you could always just scroll up, so this is a good way to see if your applications, and see, this is like the specific OID that uh, it pulled on this host to get the MySQL stats. 
And so basically when the local host, when that polar script runs and it pulls this, it fires off that uh, MySQL script we put on there. MySQL script gets all the stats, puts it back in SNMP, and, you know, we get all these uh, stats back. Okay, so I've waited a couple of minutes here, and you can see that all the stats are starting to fill in pretty nicely. Uh, and if you go through all these, you'll see that you'll have some stats in here. Uh, any, any stats is good because you know you're, you're, you're actually pulling the uh, application and it's returning values for you. So all three of these are working. So I, I would say at the very least, you probably should put these on the server that you're running Librium MS on. Uh, it's kind of like monitoring the monitor. Okay, as I was playing around here, I noticed that I actually didn't need to set this setting in the global settings for RRD cache D to work. Uh, this this setting right here is just where LibreNMS is going to look for graphs, and uh, that would still work. Uh, you, you, what really made RRD cache D work is when I edited this this uh, default file. This is what bound uh, RRD cache to. Uh, the local host or I'm pretty sure that might bind it to any IP address but regardless this is what did it because when that script that RD script ran it's actually just trying to go to a local host uh, port 42217 and when you do that it actually gives you a bunch of stats back so um, that's what that needs so you don't really need to change this you will need to change this if you do distributed polling uh, that's for that's for definitely sure um, but for this thing you didn't need to actually change that Okay, so that just about wraps it up for applications. Uh, thank you again for watching.